We need to record sound somehow, and we're going to start that discussion today. Now, there's a lot to talk about, and we're not going to be able to do this in one episode, so let's get started. Microphones. There's more to sound than just microphones, but let's spend a little bit of time talking about this now. And the first thing we're going to talk about are shotgun mics. I know you've heard of them, all right? And they are a solid option for filmmaking, but let's do a little review on what a shotgun mic is. A shotgun microphone is actually called a unidirectional microphone, and it's geared to get most of the sound from one direction, uni, and that direction is going to be in front of the tip of the microphone. It cancels out much of the sound that hits the microphone from the sides and from the back. So this is perfect for what you need in filmmaking. Now, the alternative to this is an omnidirectional microphone, which records sound equally from all directions. And that's okay for a speaker at the podium, but it's not that good for collecting sound in filmmaking. Now, my shotgun mic is a HTDZ HT-81, and it cost me all of $20. What? $20? Are you serious? What's the catch? And you're right. There is a catch. Actually, there's two of them. Um, you know, I bought this unit because I wanted to just try it out. It sounded really good. But there's two issues. The first issue being it really only works if it's about 12 inches away from your mouth. And uh, that's really not good enough. You can get maybe good sound or decent sound at 18 inches, but once you go further than that, the uh, sound just drops off. The volume just drops off. And I think that's almost a uh, virtual deal breaker right there. Uh, I've used it, but uh, you probably want something better than that. Okay, now how far of a reach should a good shotgun mic have? Two to three feet. The better models, they can actually go almost, almost four feet. Now you probably don't have to go that far, but that does show you that you know there's a big difference between a good shotgun mic and... Okay. Now, the second thing I don't like about this is that it does leave a noticeable hiss on every single audio clip that you do. You know, I routinely edit every single one of my audio clips. I process it, take the background noise out, so that's not really a big deal to me because if there's a hiss on the audio clip, I am going to take care of it and I'm going to take care of it quickly. But for you, you know, you may consider that an extra hassle and I certainly don't blame you. Now, just a warning about this unit here, I mean, if you're interested, uh, this particular model is distributed by a third party. Uh, well, actually, no, I, I shouldn't say that. It's a uh, manufactured item that is distributed by many third parties. So this same microphone shows up under a different brand name, different model name. But when you open the box, it's the exact same microphone. And the only thing that really uh, differs is the price. And you got to be careful because it varies quite a bit. This particular model, once again, it's worth $20 to $25, no more than that. Other inexpensive microphones to consider are, now you can see here from this list that all of these mics are under $100, so they all fit the label of affordable. But I think some of you are probably going to be surprised that all of these low-cost mics, shotgun mics, can only record in mono. What happens if you want to record in stereo on a low cost shotgun mic? You do the search, this is going to be your results right there. Okay. If you want stereo on a shotgun mic, you are going to have to go way up in price, over $300 just to get started, probably $700 to get a brand name that's really good. Tackstar SGC 
598. Now this has been out for a while and it it really seems to get really good reviews. I've got two links down below. Check them out. There re are reviews of this particular microphone. In the second link, you're going to see the evaluator claim that he's standing four feet away from this microphone and this thing is still picking up good sound. And all I can say is I think that's too good to be true, you know. However, it's very clear that this Tax Star is a lot better than my unit here. So we'll talk a little bit more about that later. There are also lavalier microphones and they provide the best audio quality because you can get these microphones closest to the actor's mouths. Now here's a slide that shows you some of the cheaper versions of uh, these lavalier mics. On the more advanced models, the mic actually connects to a transceiver that's hidden somewhere on the actor. And that transceiver uses radio waves to send the voice output to a, a recorder, a mixer, somewhere in the room where a sound technician is monitoring that. Now, that's kind of an advanced way, kind of an expensive way. I personally would not worry about that kind of setup. If you don't use radio waves, however, well, then you're going to have to use a very long cord from the mic through the clothing, underneath the clothing, down through your pants leg, across the floor to wherever the uh, mixer is, and once again, where the sound tech is monitoring that. Now, if you don't like that method, you can use a much shorter cord, but it's going to go from the microphone underneath the clothing to a cell phone that's running a recorder app and you take the cell phone and you can put it in the actor's back pocket. But I think you can see that if you have several actors in a scene, you've got to duplicate that effort for each individual and it gets kind of hairy. Okay, now if you do it that way, also there's no one monitoring the input, right? Because it's all in everyone's back pocket, but actually that's probably not a big deal as you will see in future episodes. I really don't care about that. Okay, I think the real issue though is hiding the microphone and the cable. We don't wear layers of clothing here in Hawaii. Uh, you know, this is my Sunday best right here. So what if you're wearing a tank top? Hmm, what if you're wearing a swimsuit? Even a t-shirt can be a problem. So to be honest with you, for lavalier mics, I've ruled them out. I don't, I'm not going to bother with them. I think they're really too much trouble. What can your phone do in terms of sound recording? Okay, well, let's say that you thought about this and you've decided, hey, why not use my phone as the microphone and the recording unit? I mean, after all, I talk into the bottom end of my phone all the time and it seems to work just fine. Is this idea viable? Well, let's listen to a voice recording that I made to test this out. This is a test of using the phone as a sound recorder, but also using the built-in microphone in the phone. It's 12 inches away. How is it picking up? We are now 18 inches away from uh, the phone. Is it still picking up? We are now two feet away from the uh, microphone in the phone, still using the phone as a recorder. How is the sound picking up? You know, the audio does sound pretty good, even at 18 inches, but I think you'll all agree that at 24 inches, it starts to drop off significantly. And I'm sure that all of you want something better than that. Um, I will say, however, that that was just using the phone microphone, the built-in microphone, and I, you know, that sound was clean, it wasn't it? I didn't hear any kind of background noise or microphone noise that was not a soundproof room. I mean, there was noise going on outside galore, but you didn't hear it. I was very impressed. Now, how about a mini shotgun mic that plugs directly into your smartphone? Well, guess what? We do have some options for that. Do these mics, these mini mics, extend the reach 
of your phone setup. Now, I think we just proved that the phone by itself with the built-in microphone, the reach is 18 inches. How much further are these mini mics going to give you if you plug them into your phone? I don't think they're going to do anything, to be honest with you. So here's my opinion, and you know that I'm never afraid to share it. Forget this mini mic stuff, okay? It's not going to work. What you want is a real shotgun mic. And based on that list that we just saw, the Tacstar SGC 598, hey folks, that's my recommendation. I mean, price is great, gets good reviews. You know, this mic has actually been reviewed a lot of time, by a lot of people, excuse me, on YouTube. And I, I am surprised that some people have made an issue that the cord coming out of the microphone is so short. And some have even said, you know, you can only use this microphone if it's attached to the top of the camera because the cord is so short, it can barely reach around the side and plug into the port of uh, where the microphone input is on the camera. You know, you know, folks, come on. That's what extension cords are for, okay? Now, this is how you're going to use the camera. You're going to take the shotgun mic. You're going to... Tape it, tie it, fasten it to a pole. That pole is going to serve as your boom. You're going to have an extension cord coming out of that mic and it's going to come all the way back to plug into your camera or your phone or your sound mixer. It'll work. Okay, folks, uh, that's it for this episode. Now, in the next episode, we're going to talk about sound recorders that you might want to consider, including using your phone as a sound recorder. We'll see you then.